Well, it's been two years since I made the video on fixing the washing machine, <coughs> and yeah, to start off, it was fine. Uh, it, it's just recently it's been slowly deteriorating. So, you know, when I first fixed it, you could, if I put like say just my work gear in there, a pair of trousers, t shirt, a couple of t shirts, maybe, and a jumper. Um, <clears throat> 60 minute dry cycle will come out absolutely bone dry, even on a 40 minute it would be pretty much dry. Um, and I've been noticing the last couple of months it's been slowly deteriorating to the point <clears throat> I use it this weekend, 60 minutes on my work gear it come out just hot and wet and I washed three towels in there the other day, uh, just a bath towel and two hand towels and I had them on a 100 minute setting, they come out as though they'd just gone through the spin cycle and nothing else. So. I think it's time to um, pull the thing out and uh, pull it apart again. Um, I just thought it would be quite interesting to film pulling it out to see just how... Let's unplug it, shall we? Always unplug before working on anything. But, oh man, it is looking pretty behind there. Shall we... Uh, well, there's the uh, twisty... Oh, let's get, let's get, get, get for a look at that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's looking good behind there. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so um, yes. Let's uh, pop the top off and see what it looks like inside. I'm going to get the Hoover first and Hoover that mess up. So there's two screws in the back to take the lid off. And if I remember correctly, you give it a jolt backwards, so one there, and one there. So yeah, there's two plastic tabs that stick down, so let's move you over there. <coughs> yep, wires wrapped up around the tripod. So... Tripod makes working on things awkward at times. And, yes. So just there anyway. I can't really pull the washer out anymore, but there is two. Uh, like just just there and one the other side there. And yeah, that does it. Get the jab backwards and it comes off. So a jab from the front towards the back. And the top comes off. Right, so if you haven't watched the last video, so once you get the top off, this is the... It is unplugged. Always make sure it's unplugged. So this point chunk here is the um, actual dryer assembly. Um, <clears throat> for Mr. For the temperature is that if you ever want to change that, you don't have to take all this apart. You can just twist that out. It's just on like a rubber grommet. So... First things first is to take this uh, assembly top off, which requires removal of some of these incredibly uh, hard to get out hex headed screws, whatever you want to call them. They're um, because this is like some kind of weird cast and you're putting detergent in here, it reacts with the metal and these sort of seize up a bit. Um, these are actually the, no it's not the big ones you want to take out first, these are the ones that actually hold that whole assembly to the drum, it's the little ones that hold it together. And they're all in awkward places but you need to also take apart the, where the <coughs> channeling ducting comes down onto the rubber of the actual drum down here. Now I've seen videos where the bloke reckons you can just push that to one side. I, not here, not with hard walls area like I live in, even when I cut the cable tie off it's still an absolute bugger to get off, so um, let me go get some snips and do that. So without cutting into the rubber, so this is a cable tie I put on here myself from the last time I had this apart. And boy did I put that on tight. Um, there we go. Right, and I realised. 
so yeah, that so even now that's still quite. But I'm not going to try and get that bit off until I've undo the screws on the top bit. So I want to pull the thermistor out, but I recall that this little clip down here is an absolute pain in the ass to squash and pull up. Um, but it needs to be done. You've got to like squash it together and pull up. But there's, as you can imagine, it's a washing machine, so there's subtle room in here. I'm going to need a pair of pliers on that. Let's see, the question is, it's alright having a pair of pliers, but it's getting them in there to uh, be of any use. And to be honest, that's a pretty slim chance of that. Man, they make these things so freaking awkward. Bear with me. Yeah, I seem to recall last time I might have actually um, just undid this and then when you invert it you can get to that. So I'm going to have to pull the um, wires off. Don't pull on the wire itself, pull on the body of the wires. The, uh, so apply it onto that part of the clip, don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's very hard trying to get anything exposure wise right when you're doing something like this <clears throat> so yeah that's the wires disconnected from the actual connections on here so I think those wire clamps on both those are going to have to come out when I actually get this apart so this isn't I believe like a two mil star drive took the liberty last time I had this apart of greasing them so hopefully that'll help I think I just need to tweak the ice on this camera hopefully that's a bit better let's look it's a bit hard again to tell on the screen you're looking at because they don't quite show the same but it was looking a bit dark um, I've got the zebra lines on and it's saying the white's a bit overexposed but that's the white so yeah these are I put like a um, a Teflon grease on these and so far they're coming out an awful lot easier than they were last time. Now admittedly last time it had been four years since they were took apart but still uh, you'd expect there to be some level of corrosion even after two years so greasing them up was a damn fine idea. Uh, WD-40 won't work it will just evaporate off uh, even something like three in one oil will probably evaporate off pretty quick. It's a very light oil. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to do something like this and you want to make it a little easier to do again in the future when you have to do it next time round, should we uh, move you a bit? Just trying to get the uh, best place to put you. Yeah, see, it's hard. Damn. Damn hard trying to um, one. Yeah. That might make it better. Got you a bit higher up. Um, you all know about. Uh, I can't remember. Something about grease probably. So yeah. Anyway, I, I've um, put the grease on. You know, like the old halogen 300, 500 watt halogen lights. Uh, I always used to um, just put a bit of grease on the screws for them because the bulbs would. You can guarantee, especially over winter when they're running a lot, trees are blowing about and setting them off and all manner of stuff, you can guarantee you'll put a couple of bulbs in on them a year and the amount of them I've gone to where the um, screw heads all just rounded off and the screw and nut are just a big blob of rust and you just think, you know, why didn't the last person who changed the bulb in here not just put the bloody, I've got an extension on that not just put a bloody blob of grease on that screw. Um, it's not really a problem these days because who uses halogen lights anymore apart from someone who's still adamant that LEDs aren't bright enough because they've probably never actually seen one 
in action. And so yeah, by the time your uh, light breaks now, even if you could change the bulb, you'd probably just be chucking it away because it'd be that old and lanky. Um, you know, the sensor would have probably all long since failed. Well, if you buy decent LED ones anyway, there's a lot of shite ones out there that don't last five minutes, but... Uh, right. So, that's all these screws out. This one's a right awkward bastard, as you can see, having to bend and get in there. So this should now, to some degree, and it is quite sticky because there's a um, silicon or some kind of seal. So the problem you have is, uh, the thermistor's still in its little rubber housing. Come on, out you come. So now you can turn it upside down and the super annoying clip you couldn't get out, you can now squeeze and even when you can see it, still struggle to push it out. Yep, there you And the same with this one here. So, that's the fan assembly. You can see there's like a hell of a buildup of dust on the impeller blades. That's nice. I don't really get it to the camera because the angle it's at, but uh, yeah. Certainly doesn't look as bad as it did last time, but uh, it definitely isn't going to be great. So this is the heating element here. Um, yeah, I can see it down there. Last time it was that bad, it had like actually sort of all started to fill up on this bit. Now I've been using a... Um, Lime scale protection tablet, Calgon style, uh, this time round. Uh, whether that will have helped, I don't know. But uh, so the fun bit is right, yeah, this assembly comes off and that sits onto the plastic bit, which you need to take off, I recall, and that's where the fun starts. So What is this? This is quite a lot bigger. Another four mil. Hopefully it's the free mil. <coughs> free mil. So, same process again. These are coarse threads into plastic, so I'm not really going to seize, but I still put a small quantity of grease on them last time just to uh, help them in and out. And as you can see the uh, markings like corrosion, heat, corrosion or uh, heat markings on the uh, element there. Um, <clears throat> see as one knows although there's a finister of air measuring the temperature if there's no airflow over this element it's still gonna get pretty hot pretty quick. Hotter than it's meant to get. Um, it's designed to have a lot of airflow. It's not got a lot of surface area, so it's designed to have a lot of airflow over it. Uh, and it's been put in a situation where it gets sod all airflow after a short while. So that comes out. A bit of corrosion on the. Um, that was there last time. It's interesting bit of corrosion that. So that's the heating element assembly. Right now we have the fun bit, trying to get this off. There's a hidden screw at the back and we're going to have to take the back of the machine off to get to it. <coughs> so that's just the standard Phillips screw and there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws on this metal plate to come out. I would say washing machines it turns out have absolutely zero level of finish quality once you get inside them. Even the outsides are rough, but everything inside is absolutely razor sharp. I mean, full on razor sharp. There doesn't seem to be the slightest bit of time or expense on making the things serviceable um, by someone who isn't aware of 
some of the pitfalls of the things. Uh, or, I should say, even the service engineers probably end up with a lot of cuts on them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it saves costs, saves time, doesn't it? Time and money. So yeah, this sort of just pops off. It sort of sits a bit behind this bit and then in front of this bit. So, the hidden screw is here. So I'll take the camera off the tripod and I will try and show you the hidden screw. Right, so this bit here, there's a screw and you can just see it there sticking through like where I'm poking with my finger, where the end of that screwdriver is. So that is going around a big clump which is holding this assembly, this assembly onto the drum. But to get to it is an absolute nightmare and I'll show you that now. Right, so I've got a sort of bendy extendy thing, 7mm socket going right down into the depths of the machine. Where have I put my torch? Yeah, it's got crap all over it. Uh, he goes right down into there somewhere. Absolutely no way you can get anything on it other than this just about. And if I try and fill the bottom of that nut to make sure I've actually got it, which now I can't even bloody see. Jeez, man. Yeah, there we go. And it come off. It is not fun. It is an absolute pain in the ass to get to. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, in it. After some swearing, uh, yes. So, you don't need to take it all the way out, you just sort of loosen it. Then there's a uh, clip on here for this piece of pipe. This is a spring clip. I'm sure there's probably a proper tool for taking that off, but uh, I just squeeze it together. So that one there. Yeah, I just uh, squeeze it together and uh, it's coming. There we go. That's that off. So now this whole assembly should, basically it wants to go back away from the back of the drum and then out. And yeah, there we go. Same again, not as bad as it was, but it's getting there. What a crap design, so. You can see like just the how blocked it is now. Last time it was blocked absolutely solid. Um, but there's a lot of crap in there this time. It's mostly, the problem is it's, it's in this bit here. So it just all just clogs up in here and the air has to go from the back of the drum through here, up here and into that heating section. And when this is blocked up, it just can't do it. And it's not exactly the, the widest of channels to start with. But there's also a filter on the back. Uh, yeah, and that's blocked solid as well. So, come down here. See that bit? That's a filter, which is supposed to catch a lot of the crap. And it's Choco blocked. Um, it twists one way or the other to come out. I can't recall now. I shall have to do that with two hands, but um, yeah, let's see what we get out of it this time, shall we? So, yeah, that's uh, not great, is it? Now, I mean, there is some airflow around the edge of this thing, but the whole point of this, this bit at the back is to let air through, and geez, that's nice, isn't it? All crusty, so it almost looks like mould, but it uh, it shouldn't be. Well, you don't know, not with the temperatures and everything that goes on inside a washing machine, but yeah, you can see if I just scrape my finger across it, that's where the holes should be. So let's give everything a clean and see what we get. 
Right, so uh, by the way, if you're looking at this sink and thinking that sink's in a state, yes it is. I was meant to be having a new sink fitted. This is like a really horrible plastic one. This actually is, the, the plastic is sort of deteriorated in sunlight and everything and it's coming apart, as you can see under my nail there. Um, and over years of scrubbing and everything, it, this sort of, this brown is actually more leaching out the plastic. Um, and the same again, you know, all the dirt built because it's just so scratched and worn out. It is a pretty sorry state. Uh, so a plumber came round end of last year. Um, uh, he was meant to be coming round earlier in the year. Anyway, come around the end of last year, finally managed to come and measure up. Um, was meant to be coming relatively early this year, however. Mr Johnson and his team decided that we need lockdown number eight trillion and whatever it is by this point, I've lost count. Um, so yeah, seeing as I have a working sink, um, replacing the sink isn't classed as essential, so the plumber hasn't come. So I'm stuck with a monkey sink for who knows how much longer. Not that it's the most important thing in my life. Simple enough to clean this, as you can see, just some water and some rubbing action. And I put a sponge in the sink to stop all the stuff going down the sink and blocking up the um, plug hole. Um, yeah, you've got to love lockdown. I get to go to work every day still. It seems none of my neighbours have to do that. And they are over here to have gone to work much in the last year now. And um, yeah, and then I'm told I'm not allowed to do anything when I get home. Which is great. Um, so yeah, you get the idea, really. It's cleaning stuff. So, that's Clen. So that was relatively easy to clean. It's the, it's the channel that's the hard bit. Well, I found what worked last time. This is like really, really awkward. You're right where I want to be stood. Um, let me zoom you out a bit. Can we just zoom? Let's come out a bit here. Yeah, look at the state of that sink in it. A beauty. Um, so yeah, basically. Oh yeah, that's absolutely great chunks. Can look at them. I mean, look at. Awesome, isn't it? So reach in and get what you can with your fingers. Um, and then after that point I found was just sort of basically trying to wash it through. Let's try some hot water, shall we? Take a boil of 45 years to fire up and actually give me hot water, but uh, Heat generally makes things move a bit better than cold water does. Yeah, I don't know if there's a... Well, boiler like that, didn't it? I don't know if there's a better way of doing this, but... Uh... Oh man, that's... That's a... It's just solid in there, isn't it? Oh, I'm just going to run some hot water for it for a while. Really let it uh, blast through. So yeah, I don't know if you can if you've done this and you found a better way to clear this out. Feel free to. Um, there we go. Ah, it's starting to move some crap. So yeah, by running it. Oh, there we go. Look at some. I can't really get it a good sploosh because, uh, like I said, you're right where I want to be. I'm basically just trying to look down the... actually look down it. What's directing the hot water? Oh yeah, hot water's the key. Oh, that's making it... that's making it all move out of there. Yeah, that seems to work quite well. Just a load of hot water. Trying to direct it down over where the actual blockages of stuff are. Actually, I'm trying to get this bit here now. Turn the uh, flow down a bit to try and get the um, water temperature a bit higher. Go in from the other 
the bridge. Oh, it's making a mess, isn't it? Trying not to cover everything in water too much. Let's give that a comes. Ah, oh, you've been like constipated. That's kind of what that reminds me of there. Yeah, too, it was hatching up on. So this bit here actually protrudes down into there by quite a bit and it's sort of wrapped around that. I think that's really where most of the air blockage is in this bit is it's changing direction. It's all getting wrapped around here and yeah, try and get a bit more off of that. It's one of those, you got to ask yourself just to what level you do go because um, at the end of the day, it's kind of like cleaning up a factory uh, at the end of the week. That, say, is a particularly messy factory. Maybe it makes um, you know something makes something that makes an awful lot of mess, and you know a lot of the machinery. You know, you, have, you see it a lot. Machinery that within. It could be absolutely brand new and spotless and within half an hour it looks like it was never cleaned. So you know it's like on a, if they want you to clean up at the end of the week. <laughs> it's great getting, you know, getting rid of the worst of it but uh, it's kind of pointless getting all the machinery to look spotless because by the time you fire the things back up on a Monday morning it'll look like no one ever touched it. And it's the same kind of thing with this, you've got to ask how far do you go, you know, I'm not going to try and get out this that's not a big solid block there, that's just a tiny bit clinging to the edges of the plastic and the same round here. Um, and yeah, alright, so if we cleaned it all out it would give less as a surface for it to adhere to because once something catches in there that's where everything else starts catching onto it and it builds up. But I'd imagine you cleaned all this off, I should say within one dry, it's probably all be back on there again. So um, yeah, that is a lot better. And that's just a... Let's just take a minute to appreciate just how much came out of there. That is an absolute mess. So yeah, that's two years worth and I've decided, I actually thought it was Friday in my head it was three years ago but it was 2019 I did it. So when I did it the machine was four years old uh, and like I say it actually not only had it been not drying properly for ages it actually if you tried to use a drying cycle it would trip out and come up with a fault code it was that bad. So it would seem realistically two years is the limit on this and you can see as that water just slowly drains away you can really start to get a I mean that is solid that you can see look see how that's um oh, if I get it to focus in on it can you see how that's like a, a shiny surface that's actually where it was so pressed solid against that, see how it's cracking. That was actually where it sort of moulded itself round the, um, the middle of that channel somewhere. So yeah, for, to be honest, I didn't think, when I first started stripping this down, I thought, that doesn't look as bad as I think it was. Maybe I'm the... Uh... Oh, that's the fun bit. I don't want all this stuff to go down the sink. I thought maybe I'm taking this apart unnecessarily, but... Uh... Now I've seen this nice, and like I say, this is compressed now. This was taking up a lot more volume in there. It wasn't as compressed solid as this is. There goes the last of the water. Um, yeah, if you don't like touching nasty things, this isn't the job for you. This is, uh, let's try and minimise the amount and that goes down the plug. If it's doing this to your washing machine, I think I'm just going to chuck this sponge out because, uh, there's really not much point trying to salvage that now, is there? Um, yeah, if it does that to your washing machine, you'd think what it does to your drain. So, take the sponge out. That's the ball we got out of it. And like I say, that's now squashed up and compressed. And there's a bit stuck to the sponge and there's a bit in the sink. So yeah, now the fun bit, trying to put it all back together. Taking it apart is easier, trust me. So... That bit down there, now it's not going to focus in on, <coughs> yes, that bit, where are you, there, so there, so that's the filter back in, I've got the three prongs sort of, one at the bottom, two at the side, it just pushes in and out really and clips in, 
So that is where the back of the um, channel needs to go on to. So that bit there. Now last time I did it, I had a hell of a job. I ended up having to put a bit of, I think I put like a bit of light oil around there just so it would go on. But I used a light oil that would evaporate off quickly because it is not. Um, and fun job to do. Last time it wasn't, this time it just seems to have uh, popped straight on. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Trying to make sure it is actually on and not just sort of sitting. And uh, now you see. Yeah, you see, it wasn't on, it was sitting sideways. Now it's on. It's hard to tell. So it's one of those you don't want the seal to just kind of pinch inwards and you don't want it to be sat sideways so it's gone on one half and not the other half. It feels like it's gone on but no it looks it's up against the back of the drum there. So the question is exactly what angle does this need to sit at? Is it like that? I think that is about the... Don't know what that was. Ah. Yeah, about there. So, let's try, shall we? If that's about right, this should line up pretty muchly. So, that's about the angle it wants to be at. So now to do up the super secret hidden screw again. And that is the fun bit because you need this to stay where you've got it once you do that screw up. I'm going to have to move you out of the way because there's no way I can get to that with the camera in the way. So what I've found works is have the um, nut on the end of the tool already. Is a lot of fun that it is. Right, yeah, what happens is the uh, the clamp itself just sort of spins away from you as you try and do it up because until it has some tightness on it, it will just move away. So as you put the uh, as you put the drive a bit on it, instead of doing it, you'll just push it away from. Uh, yep, yeah. like I said, everything is razor sharp, so I've managed to get that on and just do it up a bit by hand first. That's it. So. I feel I've cut my arm to in various places. Oh, come on. Why aren't you gone? Is awkward. <clears throat> it just wants to keep walking away from you and I would say that's the most difficult bit of this is getting that bugger done back up. So, if 
difficult to keep any pressure on that and that nut. And that feels pretty tight. That's the thing, isn't it? Knowing how tight you've actually done it. Um, all right. Uh, you see, if it spins round too far, it fouls on the plastic tab. So I couldn't physically do it any tighter than that if I wanted. Um, I think that's tight enough. Uh, that's definitely tight enough. Let it move in. Woo, woo wee. Yeah, so take you off of there. Um, we see it. So there. Can you see the metal screw is actually up against the plastic now because the clamp itself is spun round a bit. But that is that is tight. I cannot. I think I'd break that before it came off, so I'm happy with that. So it's interesting, there like used to be a hole here by the looks of it. Like I remember when I first took it apart, and the fact it's almost like it's just full of lime scale now. Um, and whatever it is, you can see it corrode where it actually that just sits up against just out of shot, that bit there. That bit. Um, so yeah, I have no idea why that's cast into it like that, but um, yeah, the corrosion on it is just immense. It just gives you an idea of how corrosive the stuff you put in your washing machine. You can't really see the depth of it, but there's chunks of it missing. It's like actually eaten through the metal. Um, it's quite impressive. So, you know, try and get some of the uh, bits of floof out of everything else along your way. There's no point not doing it so oh, look at that oh, almost perfection <coughs> so back to the uh, free mill I think these are big coarse plastic grub threads so rather than trying to just do it up and cut a new thread in back it off you feel it drop as the thread lines up then you do it up and it just goes back into its old thread and like anything with assembly get all four of them in and you know, so I'm not I'm not doing that up to a point where they're putting any pressure on it get all four of them in try and line it up a bit and then slowly torque them down in some kind of sequence Uh, you're always going to get on better doing that. You see, I've got uh, nice little marks on my hand. I've got some scrapes all over my arm. I don't even know what I've done it on. Like I said, everything on the inside of a washing machine is just razor sharp. That one kind of feels like it's trying to cut a new thread, but hey ho. Let's do these ones up first. This side, because. question is how many more of these does it have in it you know how many more times am I going to be able to take this apart and do this in two years time is this still going to be working or is it going to be foobard um, so I don't know if my lime scale prevention tablets have had any desirable effect kind of feel not to me. I thought, you know, it's one of those, all that lime scale prevention stuff you've put in is great for the heating element down the bottom end, but once you're on the drying cycle that's all gone out of the machine anyway, and so it's the fresh water from the mains being fed into this. Um, so although the clothes themselves, the water that was in them, um, has had the lime scale treatment, even they aren't really benefiting it from that point because that initial wash which had the lime scale preventer tab in it went out before the rinse cycle started so yeah I did kind of think it was you know it probably helps preserve the life of the 
heating element and the inside of the drum down the bottom end but I did think it would kind of do very little if nothing at all with this issue but like I said last time this is just me using this I don't really do a great deal of I'm not putting on tons of bedding and kids clothes and everything all the time it's just a couple of loads a week work gear and a few pairs of jeans and t-shirts and stuff that I've worn throughout the week and um, man that's awkward you know occasionally bedding and towels and stuff and two years and it's um that ain't coming up that's get that clip a bit lower yeah imagine if you had a whole family using this machine it would be yeah that clips over the uh, pipe pipes over the um over the little ever piece of pipe and the clips on the plastic bit you imagine how fast you know you think two years a single bloke um even just a couple with one kid i bet this will be getting four times as much use and if you like winter time you know think well i just used a dryer within one year it would be absolutely knackered within one year it would have ceased to function and been um bringing up the fault lights so like i said there's a lot of floof on the insides of these bits so i think i'm going to clean them off with the screwdriver i reckon let's see uh, what we get if this is a waste of time or not oh no you know comes off easy enough there's no point leaving it on at the end of the day it's going to be restricting airflow because look these have quite a nice angle on them in order to help direct the airflow and with all this floof on it it's just now a smooth channel with some restriction to its original width and it's lost that angle which I'm sure is put in there deliberately to do something it's a centrifugal fan air goes in gets flung out essentially so I should say that um, the shaping of these veins is quite important and with this crap all over them they've lost that so yeah this was definitely worth a few minutes just to uh, look how much is coming off of there let's dead simple screwdriver in just run it down to the next one again it's pointless getting it absolutely pristine clean looking like it was brand new yeah that's all of them how much did i get out of that all that nice nice well worth it there's a little bit more on someone i might just give them a second scraping um some of them it didn't clean as much off as it could have done yeah like so i'm not trying to make them look new i'm just trying to get the worst of it off some of them are a bit crapped up still. Spin and a blow. Whew. And you're going to ask yourself uh, how much of that is like your dead skin that's accumulated on your clothes and hair and stuff. Interesting thought that. I must say this has certainly took an awful lot less time that's looking better isn't it certainly it took an awful lot less time than it did when I first did it because the first time around I wasn't sure where the fault lied um, I'd had it apart and I'd like just cleaned out here I didn't realize how bad it was back there um, and you know I'd been making sure the various things are filling up so I want to make sure this seal is still in place it just wants poking in a little bit there but it's pretty good it's pretty good yeah last time I know I pulled the heating element and everything out I think as well no need to do that so seal is in place all the way around which it is I need to get this bit on and in there um, 
probably going to be easier to get it into the front first, maybe no, because it's got too much angle on the casting. It has to go together on the casting in the front. It has to go straight over it. Ah. Oh yeah, everything is just so fun with a washing machine. It really, really is. I might become a washing machine serviceman. Sounds like a real fun and exciting and rewarding career to get into. Don't get me wrong, I'm not taking the piss out of them. I just don't envy what they do. It must be an absolute ass of a job to do day in, day out. But I bet it's good money. I know, you, know, you tell me. How much do you reckon a service call that would be for something like this? We turn probably £45 an hour. Minimum one hour charge of assessment, then we'll just buy all the parts. A couple of hours worth of work, what are you looking at, 200 odd quid? You just, why would you bother? You'd just buy a new machine, next pay the extra 100 quid or whatever and buy a new one, wouldn't you? Um, and I bet you absolutely, ouch, there's absolutely no way that's what Indusit planned when they built it. Yeah. It's exactly what they planned. The idea is they don't want you to get your washing machine fixed. They don't care if your washing machine breaks after one winter. What they want is for you to just go out and buy a new one. That's my grease on these screws. Right, I'm going to get some more grease for these screws. Let's uh... grease everything up. So this is some Teflon. It says it works up to 170 degrees centigrade which seems to me to be perfect for using in a washer dryer. That needs to get hot. Um, so yeah, the solvent oil probably evaporates over time. And you'll just be left with the Teflon which is going to form a barrier between what you don't want to stick and the thing you don't want it to stick to. In this case, these bolts, screws, hex heads, whatever you want to call them, and the casting of that. Uh, this stuff is, it's, it's, uh, uh, ooh, nice. Just use a resin, it really does just get on everything and not want to come off. <clears throat> if you're wondering what that was, uh, it's this stuff. Thin Lube TF. Got it from a place I worked from many years ago for um, just the right price. <coughs> Don't know if it's still available. Don't know um, how much it would cost if it is available. I've had that now for... Ooh. 20 odd years and yeah it's good stuff I used it in a um, at like a cheapo fan eater I brought and after a couple of months the bearings started making really bad noise so it's got it was just loads of anti-tamper screws uh, and again took it apart once as I put it back together some of the mounting points broke but I put some uh, just oil on there and it worked okay for a couple of months again and it started making it was just the bearing when it was cold would annoy the hell out of you you know if it kicked in whilst you was trying to sleep instead of just a nice gentle white noise in the background you had this really aggressive sounding fan heater clunking away um, so when I took it apart a second time I put some of that stuff on it and it never needed doing again I had to take it apart to clean it was a PTC type ceramic heating element you know the PTC wafer sandwich between the radiator fins and it, they blocked up severely uh, cleaned all them out shortly afterwards one of them blew so I rewired it so because it was like stacked in like they'd actually used the fins as the live and neutral and then they were just sandwiched between them 
So I've moved the connections about so the blown one was out of circuit but you could still have most of them in circuit and it ran for a few more months and then eventually broke. Um, but one thing that never went was the bearing after putting this stuff on it. Uh, again, if I hadn't serviced that heater would have lasted about a year realistically before anyone else would have chucked it in the bin. I you know, you say they don't build stuff like they used to, but then again we don't buy like we used to. I'm sure they could build a fan heater which would last 20 years, but who'd buy it when you go into the shop on a cold day or a cold spell and you just want a bit of extra heating for a bit? Are you going to buy the 20 quid fan heater or the £10 special offer one they've got on or the 250 quid one? Yeah, well, we all know the answer to that question, don't we? So they're all done up. Uh, camera's in the way of that one, which makes life fun, but. Yeah. Call that done up. Uh, that one. Right, so. Little persistor, uh, anti C for mister, even, goes in there. That clips in there. Yeah, what do we got? These power wires go. So that wants to clip into there. Power block for the fan. Which way around does that go? Just uh, like that, maybe. Go that way, surely. Feels like he wants to go that way, but it. Eh? Hey? No, no, that way. So I was on, that's sidewards. Oh, that way. There we go. Like that. Yeah, that was the last way you try. So, live at the bottom. It doesn't overly matter which one you put live and neutral on of these two because it's an AC circuit anyway and it's just a heating element, but. They put neutral at the top probably so in case anyone comes in with fingers they're not going to whack, whack off of that. It's the most important one on the earth. So the only thing left to do is put some cable ties around that front bit. So two cable ties, oh, screen's upside down, two cable ties because um, I don't have one long enough just one into the other. And I try and line them up so this uh, clip is this side, this clip is this side. You don't want one of these clips in the middle. You want them at the outside where they're going to be useful. So it sits above those clamp pull tabs. So Just do one a bit and the other a bit to the light so you can see they're both ones to the outside there. That's the torch. Zoom you in a bit. So I don't really know if you can see it. So one is there, one is here. Can't really see that one from the angular. And a pair of pliers. Can't really do that one up anymore. Pretty tight. So yeah, done them by hand about as tight as they was going to get, I think. Just about. There we go. And now it's just put the. Um, hey, steady live. Uh, oh, man, got this plugged into the charger or on the power pack rather than the uh, on the battery. And every time you try and move it, it just wraps itself around the tripod leg. So this bit last, so <clears throat> good feel that is on good. I'm just gonna be paranoid with that bit. Yeah, that's all. So this bit, so there's screw 
thread holes there, but however, this bit at the back is weird. It doesn't have a thread hole in it. It's an odd number. So yeah, that's upside down, I think. That's it, that one. So yeah, where's the bit? The top one, the thread hole is actually in the metal plate that's going onto the back rather than in the back of the machine. So it's and again real absolutely no finish to it whatsoever, no finesse to it, just rough as it sticks, you try and move it a little bit and it just jerks. Absolute a million miles away from where you wanted it. Definitely need free hands for this bit. Same again with metal screws. Back them off until they line up with the thread. Just do it loose because you're going to have to just fine tune this. Once you've got a couple in, they're holding. I've no idea what's being filmed here because I can't see it. Feels <clears throat> <clears throat> like there's And then the top of them, which so these are just going into real thin sheet steel. There's no point trying to get a lot of torque on them. Just twist them gently till they stop, and then put the tightest amount of force on them because all you're going to do if you try and tie them up is just going to instantly bend the sheet it goes into and deform it. Ah. One last visual inspection, everything back as it was. Final thing to do is put the top back on. So installation is the reverse of fitting. So you have some little tabs at the front that go under. Just like that. No force at all needed. And that should be your last two screws, which are slightly bigger than the ones which go in the back of the machine. Um, let go in that panel I just put on, same again, back them off. And then nip it up. And that's it. One service, Indesit, whatever bloody number it is. Uh, IWDC 6105 um, yes and that will be it so as always um, just make sure you don't get leaks and stuff so I'm gonna keep an eye on this I'm gonna put a wash on now keep an eye out for any water on the floor because uh, you know you pull all the joints apart we can get the top of clean that's a nice oily residue on there but yeah that's it, that's the um, another service on this washing machine, washer dryer, because it's a crap design. How am I going to be making washer dryers? Seriously, you're telling me they've all been made like this all this time. Yeah, who can say? Look, there it is, back and working again. It's currently on a wash cycle because, you know, you got to wash something before you dry and I'm not going to stand here in the kitchen and wait for this thing to start drying something just to finish this video off but uh, yeah I'm not sure how long I think I started quarter past seven twenty past so I don't know maybe that was like 40 minutes or so not bad uh, yeah like I say you've just got to start looking at some of those parts and things how many times will they let you take them apart and put them back on before things start breaking so looks like blood on there that is blood Yep, I shedded blood somehow, somewhere. Um, yeah, scrubbed all my arms and everything with soap because the amount of cuts and grazes you got up them after doing it. But yeah, I don't know. 
see if I can't keep it running for a few more years yet. Um, you know, some people would ask why you don't just get a close horse. Well, <clears throat> in the summer, fair dues, washing line, close horse, windows open, but when you evaporate water, it takes a lot of energy, and however you do it, you have to generate that energy. So in winter time, that energy is coming from your heating. Uh, if you put it in the tumble dryer, it's coming from the dryer. It, it will use the exact same amount of energy. And when you dry your clothes in your house, admittedly, if you want a bit of extra humidity, it makes sense. But you'll generally find you dry your clothes in your house. It's a lot of water. That all goes into the air. It takes the energy from your heating to heat it. So the heat has to run a bit more to heat the room up. And now all that water gets deposited all over your windows or everywhere else. Um, I don't like a lot of humidity, so I use the dryer. Um, and it's kind of convenient as well if you do a lot of hours and you're quite busy and you don't have time to be here to take your stuff out of the washer. You know, you put it on in the morning, you don't want to be waiting for two hours to then go and hang it out on the line. So I must admit, even in summertime, there's plenty of times where I still put the drying cycle on just because it means when I get home from wherever I'm doing my work clothes it'll all be dry and I can use them the next day so um yeah anyway so that's the uh, IWDC 6105 washer dryer broken dryer section fix yet again as always uh, I don't know if you've seen the video on this one or not uh, this one's a few years later better camera tripod computer etc etc uh, still no better filming by the um, camera operator, but uh, hey ho. Uh, so yeah, not a hard job. I would say if you're going to have a go at something like this, if it's above your technical ability, call someone else. This is just meant to be a sort of, it's not even instructional, I can't think of the word. It's basically just a step-by-step -step of the processes that are going to be involved. It's up to you to decide whether this is something you can do or not. You know, you mess something like this up, you risk flooding your house, like you risk tripping your electric out, possibly setting something on fire, uh, you risk damaging the machine, you risk damaging yourself. Um, yeah, just because you watched my video, it doesn't mean you've been qualified to do something like this. But uh, uh, if uh, you think you can do it, and I see there's been plenty of comments on the previous video of people saying they used my video and fixed it, so I will say. Uh, you know, best of luck to you, and uh, as always, uh, whether this is the first time you've watched my channel or you're a regular just watching a random video I made, thanks for watching, and uh, catch you again, hopefully.